We're experiencing great changes in weather patterns, in climate. We're getting hotter, the extremes are happening more rapidly, but people who garden, connect with the soil, are growing plants, are making a positive difference. We're creating landscapes that heal the soil, that heal the earth, that heal our souls. These landscapes are incredibly important to us as a species on this planet. As the climate's changing, as things are getting more extreme, there's an even greater need for people to understand and work with the natural world. The climate, there's no question in my mind, has, has gotten much warmer and milder. So we can grow all sorts of things we only dreamed about growing once. Uh, many of these are plants that are kind of, we shouldn't be growing perhaps. But when we start using the plants that come from our, our native region and adapted like that, and when we start growing them like in this beautiful garden here, you create a garden which really speaks to our native landscape. Native plants are already adapted to Colorado soils as well as the Colorado climate. And so they don't need any soil amendments. They're not gonna need fertilizer and they aren't gonna need a lot of water. They can definitely um, still look great in drought conditions. My interest in being more sustainable in landscaping was spending time in wild areas and thinking how beautiful the landscapes are. And that's what everybody comes to Colorado for is our natural beauty of the landscapes. And yet we go home and try to create these um, artificially irrigated landscapes that are on life support constantly. And it just didn't make sense to me. Um, I understand people wanting to grow some of their favorite traditional plants and that's not a problem. But for the larger picture, it makes so much more sense to use plants that are adapted and don't require so much of your time and your energy and your resources. An essential part of sustainable gardening is making our gardens ecologically relevant to the larger environment around us. So this includes providing food for wildlife, so fruits, nuts, berries for birds and other small animals, reducing the amount of water that we use, including plants that support the pollinators that are around us. We want to support that larger environment with our gardens. And when you add water smart plants to a garden, especially using natives, you really end up with a more resilient garden and you're also kind of preserving something that we lose as development continues all around us. The big difference in a garden like the water smart garden or a purely native garden is that they often will look just great just on regular rainfall, requiring little or no supplemental water. So that is a big difference in how much water an average home is going to use. It's important when we're thinking about gardens and landscapes to think about plants that come from around the world that have a similar climate or the climate that we're looking to help us sustain. Here at the Denver Botanic Gardens, we are in the center of the great North American steppe climate. Steppe regions are fascinating places. It's the short grass prairies of the world, but they experience extreme cold in the winter, extreme heat in the summer, often long periods of drought. A steppe is most always in the rain shadow of a great mountain range. There's really the four great steppe regions of the world. There's Central Asia, North America, South America and Patagonia, and Southern Africa with the mountain kingdom of Lesotho and the country of South Africa. Plants from these four steppe regions generally do very well for us here. A lot of the work we're doing with new species and research now will impact our industry in the years to come. A group called Plant Select is a marketing program for introducing some of the work that we do here at the Botanic Gardens and making it available to consumers. They work to find more plants that can be used in our gardens, whether they're native plants or selections of native plants or plants from other regions around the world that are very similar to our region. It is overwhelming to think about removing an entire lawn or starting from scratch with a new garden. Biting off more than you can chew is a great way to discourage yourself from gardening in the future. And so what I would suggest would be to 
create a slow transition to native plants in your garden. Think about the parts of your lawn that you maybe use the least and consider uh, taking out that lawn and installing you know, adapted and native plants, uh, small pieces at a time. Notice any plants in your garden that may be flagging in the summer heat, requiring extra hand watering, requiring some fertilizer or soil amendments, and then replace them with a native plant species. It can be a slow progress year after year to create something beautiful, sustainable, and lasting. And so I think it's important that if everyone can come together and start using native plants, using less water, it will definitely help out in the long run. And I think that you can honestly create a garden that's as stunning and more stunning using these plants. And I think we really should embrace it. And, uh, and, and more and more people are.